If you've ever DM'd a role-playing game, or written one, or heck, even played one, you know how important setting the scene can be for your players. Let's take a look at 10 tips that will help you to set the scene for the ultimate role-playing session. Anyone who's ever run an adventure out of a book knows that in each section there will be box text. This box text is what you're meant to read out loud to the players in order to set the scene so they know what they see or sense when they enter a room or go into the deadly forest. Good scene description will add to your player's immersion, getting them sucked in, whereas bad scene description is really gonna take them out of it, lead to confusion, and have them asking you so many questions that as a DM, you really don't want to deal with. I have a love-hate relation with this kind of scene description. When it's good, it's a great tool, not just for DMs, but for adventure writers as well. By quickly setting a scene and tone and orienting the players, it can save a game for less experience and underprepared DMs. I've been both. It can also force the adventure designs by the very act of having to write it to think harder about their encounters. When box text is bad though, it's really bad. And far too often, it is bad. It can be a drain on players' attention. It can make the DM's job harder by being obtuse, uninteresting, misleading, or distracting. You can edit bad text boxes, but it's more painful than editing even stat boxes. Tip number one, change your nouns from the second person to the third person. Now this might sound a little strange since most games, even from the earliest computer RPGs, use the word you, as in you see the corpse of a dragon in front of you. Something like that would be the way the text is. But by avoiding the second person and using the third person, you can avoid moving the PCs when they might not want to move, and you've given them a chance to enter the clearing from any direction and in any manner they choose. It also makes it very difficult to add bits like you believe or you think, which steals players' agency. For example, if we change as you enter the clearing, you notice the bloated corpse of a dragon. You can change that to the bloated corpse of a dragon dominates the center of a clearing much better for the players overall. The next tips are related, but avoid novelist and dramaticist urge. You want a certain amount of detail, but you don't need to go all Stephen King, 10,000 pages, just to set the scene. DMs and game designers, they often have a story to tell, but that text, the scene text, is not the place to unleash it. Nothing slows a game down more than paragraph after paragraph of box text especially when the DM has to stumble through prose that nobody wants to associate with. And there's three main kinds of this. All the relevant details are fine for box text and maybe one or two little flourishes. But if you pile on the obvious and irrelevant and maybe some overwrought details, they make the players lose focus. The rule of thumb when you're writing or editing is to leave only the details about the environment when the PCs must interact with them on some level. So for example, if you're entering a swamp and there's a stench of a certain creature in that swamp, that's only important to the encounter. So you wouldn't want to say upon entering the swamp, oh, you smell this smell of death. This also holds true with terrain features or a monster's ability. The other side for that is if you enter uh, a glade and there are wildflowers everywhere, that's great if it's a party of elves that are all herbalists or something like that. Or it can be used to contrast. So for example, if the players have been in an area dominated by evil, now they enter a place where they smell these wildflowers and it can give them a sense that it is good, that maybe they're safe. Could be false sense of security or it could be a signal to them that finally 
they can rest for a moment. Number three, the villain soliloquy. This is a trope, not just a fantasy, but much of storytelling of popular culture. The characters, they fight their way into the boss fight, the evil mastermind. And there, that evil force has to tell them their plan. And it takes time, it goes into paragraph after paragraph, which nobody really cares. Bad guys are evil, they need to be stopped. This is great if you intentionally want to give your players a chance to do something while the villain is soliloquy, if your adventure is a little tongue in cheek. But if you're in a bit more serious, you just can't take a villain serious when they do that. What's the solution? Look, PCs are always a nuisance. Those PCs should always learn the evil plan throughout the adventure so that by the time they arrive and have that big battle, they already know the plan. Trash talking can take place during combat rather than before. Two minutes and tons of player adventures are saved. Tip number four, the action in progress. So this is similar to the evil soliloquy problem. Instead, it involves the action instead of talking. Sometimes PCs are forced to watch while some plot point happens, either leading up to a combat or after combat ends or just a scene in the flow of your game's narrative. The characters just saved the prince and now they get to watch this coronation. If, his, if your players are into it, great. However, chances are even the most invested player nods off after the eighth paragraph of text describing the festivities. A solution to this? Give PCs the chance to interact with the scene, even if it's just standing in the crowd trading quips. Better yet, put them up on the royal stage trying to hold still during the ceremony while a pesky mosquito bites at them. Let the characters be the focus. Save the you watch while moments for times when you really need them. Tip number five, describe everything the characters can sense, but not what they can't. Now this might seem a little obvious, but it's something that a lot of DMs actually over explain. So for example, let's say the characters go into a warehouse and they're full of locked crates and they're looking for the sacred artifact that will take them to their god. The characters couldn't know what's in the crates without actually opening them. So don't tell them that it's in there. Don't tell them that, oh, they're full of religious iconography or different statues. Let them open each one. Let the mystery linger for just a little bit. Tip number six, let maps and arts do their job. If your adventure includes maps and art for an area, either if you made it yourself or you got it out of some campaign book, let the players look at it. Let them see what the important things are. Room size is detailed by maps. Uh, pictures of a statue of your god could be worth a thousand words of description, but allow the players to decide that. Now, if there's something important that needs to be explained, so for example, there's a fire pit or the roof is open in this part and it's relevant to the story, go ahead and describe that. But otherwise, let them see what they can see from the visual aids. Tip number seven, avoid words like seems to be or appears to be. For the characters, perception is reality. Everything they sense appears to be what it is, and nothing triggers metagaming like the word seems or appears in your scene descriptions. When you use them in players' minds, they generally think that there's some sort of trick or diversion. We don't think when you're, let's say, you're going to a public restroom and the toilet looks open, you don't say it appears to be open. All of a sudden, people might think like, wait, is it not really open? What's going on? But no, it's free, go for it. And that's what you need to do to characters too. So whenever you uh, have them make a perception or investigation or even an insight check, drop the seems to be and use more objective terms. For example, is. That door is unlocked, not it seems unlocked. Tip number eight, this advice goes for anything, any role-playing game that you're doing read your scene description aloud and check it for readability this this actually goes for any kind of reading you do let's say you had a npc named 
Buster Slats. It's really gonna sound bad when you're reading that out loud. One time years ago, I was playing in a game and the DM made one of his NPCs named Gaydor. You better believe there was a lot of laughing at that. Tip number nine, don't use words that are specific to the game mechanics in a non-mechanical way. So some of those terms are, for example, conditions. You wouldn't wanna say, the as you enter the room, the bar wench looks stunned. Stunned has a specific meaning, that she's unable to move. People will think that something is off. Or if you say you enter the clearing in the woods at night and there's a magical look to the stars above you. If you say that, they're gonna think that there's actually some magic to that. Make sure when you're writing these scenes, you don't use words that have an actual mechanical meaning in the RPG that you're playing. Tip number 10, brevity is king. When you're setting an initial scene, try not to have the description more than about four sentences. The reason for this is you want to set the stage. You don't necessarily want to over explain the meaning of everything on that stage. Set what it looks like, where it is. If you players don't have a map, general dimensions of whatnot, set what people or creatures are doing. All of those things can be done in one sentence for each. When you do this, your players are then going to want to explore more and they'll ask for more detail. At that point, go ahead and do it. And a bonus tip, fake it till you make it. If you have the minimal description, it's okay to just make up whatever comes to mind when they ask for additional more. If it's not written in a player's hand guide or a campaign guide, or you haven't written it yourself, it's okay, make it up on the spot. The players won't know the difference. All right, so what did you guys think of these 10 tips? Leave your comments down below. I would love to hear what you think. What other tips would you add? So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. We'll be back with more D&D videos soon.